First of all, we have to understand that what digital rupee is. It actually is a physical currency converted into digital. So the moment you receive the money, you can start using it. Mm -hmm. And then if you have extra saving from them, then the bank can step up. That you could go and deposit in the bank. Challenges are more in terms of newer concept. How do you kind of uh, educate it? How do you get the new technology to work for you better? So wherever physical money today gets used, it will kind of uh, get subsumed into this. Not everything, but yeah. major, major part of it. Obviously, as the, these new ecosystem, new players come in, as they kind of come up with some newer ideas, obviously yeah. the investors will looking at that as an opportunity to invest. Thank you so much, Mr. Sudhir, for doing My this. Pleasure. You've been an industry veteran, yeah. and um, I think coming from you as insight would be great for our viewers to learn and uh, understand what's next, right, on in the fronts of digital rupee. So my first question is, what steps is RBI taking, you know, in terms of security and privacy of transactions through digital rupee? What's next on that? So let's first understand where we are in the journey of digital rupee. Yeah. I think we are just at the pilot stage. Right. And the pilot stage objectives primarily are to see whether the basic functionality of the transaction, both for retail and wholesale, is working or not. Right. And of course, it does include to do all the basic checks around security, privacy. Right. And as of now, if you see, it's a very kind of by invite only transaction. Mm -hmm. Currently, it's exposed only to the bank customers, not yet even to a common man. So yeah. all of those customers are completely done and coming through full KYC. And as I said, currently all the security norms that apply in a digital payment world, whether from encryption to uh, security audits, all of those are applicable with the participants in the ecosystem, whether the banks or any other th third party service provider. Right. So we could say that it is as secure as any other transaction that is happening in the digital world today. And obviously RBI is continuously monitoring it. Great, fantastic. Um, how will digital rupee impact the financial inclusion and access to the banking services for the unbanked population of our India? Very good question because a lot of time people think digital rupee is probably not for the common man. Right. And it may not even drive inclusion. So why do we need it? Right. And quite often they also confuse it with UPI. This yeah. is just the pie and this is the money. Yeah. So first of all, we have to understand that what digital rupee is, it actually is a physical currency converted into digital. Yeah. And when you look at a physical currency, the key difference between that and any other product, yeah. whether it's a prepaid card, whether it's a credit card, whether you're bank money, they are all money forms, but they are not necessarily currency. Right. Currency has a legal tender, which gives us a power that it is compulsory acceptable by everyone. Mm -hmm. Also, when you hand over a rupee note at a retail transaction, the transaction is over there. So the payment and settlement and the settlement finality is right then there. Right. In every other transaction, you have a multiple steps. Right. Even take an example of UPI transaction. Let's say I transfer to you as a Kusbu or money. Yeah. Right. While the credit will appear in your account real time. Yeah. Right. There may be some difference over time, etc. Very yeah. nominal. But at the back end, the two banks who have to, let's say, my bank is HDFC, yours is Kota. Yeah. That transfer has, still has to take later on. Mm -hmm. Right, which means there's a some settlement process pending, and then Correct. that leads to certain processes. Right. But in if we were to do the same thing in a physical rupee, mm -hmm. I would have given you the money, the transaction is yeah. over. Yeah. This is exactly same experience in a digital world. Correct. So physical currency today, the biggest limitation that it has is that it does not work in a digital world. Right. But digital world is a reality today. Mm -hmm. So if you have the same physical currency, I call it currency on steroids. Yeah. This is what digital rupee is. So if you first understand this, that this is the money, this is used even today, over 60-70% of retail transactions are by end consumers in physical cash. Yeah. So they like it because of this instant settlement, no questions asked, the transaction then and that over, even smaller value, much faster. Yeah. So all those features were missing in every other product. Right. So today all those features come. Now to give you one specific example on inclusion. Yeah. Let's say today a government wants to transfer some specific benefit to a particular customer. Most mm -hmm. of the scheme requires them to first open a bank account, yeah. then kind of transfer that money through the other like transaction, and then they receive it. And the challenge is that most of these customers can't even keep it in the bank account. This bank right. account is for saving. Right. So they have to compulsory go withdraw and then use. Right. So if you see the steps for the same work, now compare it to a digital rupee. All you need to know is probably their phone number and the Aadhaar. True. And you can directly send them this to their phone. It's right. a code. 
right. which is a value. Right. Now, this because it is a equal to currency in a digital form, it is immediately usable with all the ecosystem that's available to start accepting, right. which is increasing rapidly right. and can be increased rapidly at a much later level. So, the moment you receive the money, you can start using it. Right. And then, if you have extra saving from them, then the banking step comes that you right. could go and deposit in the bank. Right. So, if you see from the step, from the cost, from the efficiency, at the speed which you could deliver, right. and also with this being a programmable money. Right. If the government want to say that, okay, I will restrict this particular money only for medicine. Right. I will restrict this only for rice. Mm -hmm. So you could also do those programming, which today you cannot do, let's say, in a physical currency. Right. So right. I personally believe this is a big tool and this is a real answer to a physical currency transaction. This mm -hmm. is the only product compared to everything else that exists in the market, right. which can actually compete with physical currency. Right. Got it. Excellent. And what are the potential challenges and risks associated with the introduction of digital rupee and how does RBI plan to address them? Yeah. So while I'm not the right person to talk on behalf of RBI, but as yeah. a general practitioner, we could say uh, challenges. I think any new product has multiple challenges. Correct. This is the first new concept. Correct. The technology yeah. stack is new. Yeah. And that's why we are still calling it pilot or let's say the ecosystem is still in a pilot phase. Yeah. Because when you launch something new, you always have some newer discoveries, sometimes challenges, sometimes opportunities, sometimes yeah. threats. So you have to look at all of that. Yeah. Fundamentally, the biggest challenge currently is about understanding this concept. Mm -hmm. Educating in financial services education is always a bit of a challenge right. for customer to understand the difference, for an example, between a bank, money, uh, currency, etc. And we don't expect them to understand all of right. it so well, right? That's our job yeah. as an ecosystem. But let me simplify and say that this has similar risk like a physical currency. Mm -hmm. You lose your money, you lose it. Mm -hmm. So you lose your, while it has some advantage because it's digital, so you have a resource back or let's mm -hmm. say recourse back with your passwords, with your wallets. But mm -hmm. fundamentally, it has a similar risk because you have given the money and if you have given it wrongly, unless you know the person, you may not have it. So mm -hmm. again, the risk and challenges are similar. Challenges are more in terms of newer concept. How do you kind of uh, educate it? How do you get the new technology to work for you better? Uh, mm -hmm. Those are the challenges. And mm -hmm. obviously, that is why the Reserve Bank has gone with the pilot. They are increasing the ecosystem gradually. Mm -hmm. They're not going as a big bank approach. Right. They are again going case by case use cases. Not all things are opened up. For example, Correct. international transactions are not yet open on this. Correct. Right. So right. all of those will be done in a phases. Cases. Absolutely. Can you explain the technological infrastructure yeah. you know, that will support the digital rupee and how it will be integrated to the existing financial systems? So the first part, I'm not the right person. I think you have the <laughs> yeah. audience here, which is yes. the well equipped to answer about the technology stack and how it works. But yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a fundamentally a DLT stack that they're working along with some sort of a rails with the bank. But the second part, yeah. How does it interface with the rest of the ecosystem? I think that's very important. So in our country, the entire payment and settlement infrastructure is works on a principle of interoperability. Mm -hmm. So even today, if you see that when the digital rupee is launched, it works already with the banking ecosystem. It already works with the bank's existing merchant network. So gradually they are phasing it out mm -hmm. just to kind of monitor it. Right. But because of this interoperable network concept, whatever mm -hmm. products you launch, Eventually, this product will work everywhere where your bank money, debit card, credit card works because it is inbuilt Correct. in the system design. Correct. So you will see that ecosystem integration automatically in this scheme also. Okay. It's just because of the pilot phase is going gradually. Okay, awesome. Um, how will the digital rupee foster uh, innovation in fintech and drive entrepreneurship? Um, in India? Interesting. So I think if you look at very simply, even a UPI journey, yeah. That how many fintechs it created, how many even big techs got interested, how many banks have also become very big in a digital payment just Correct. by being part of the ecosystem. Same way I believe CBDC in its full-blown capacity in 5 to 10 years' time will be probably 10 to 20x of this or potentially even more because yeah. these are taking guys. So if you see from that perspective, this is money. So wherever physical money today gets used, it will kind of uh, get subsumed into this. Not everything, but yeah. major, major part of it. Mm -hmm. Especially where the consumer does not have any, let's say, any reason to hide the cash transaction or let's say do some tax evasion. If those issues are not there, you would actually prefer to use it. Because right. the experience, if you really use it, I as a user know that this is much better. Right. So from that perspective, there are newer opportunities that are emerging for the financial uh, services ecosystem, including new entrepreneur and fintechs. Mm -hmm. I mean, there will be newer concepts. For example, why can't you just simply disburse loans in a digital currency? Right. Especially small value, right. which are fungible, usable 
the entire micro finance industry can actually work on digital rupee much right. more seamlessly right. much better much faster right so there are some new stream and new thinking mm -hmm. that will come in uh, right. and i think that is a huge opportunity for the newer startups to start thinking even existing players who are working they will have to get ready to start integrating it and become interoperable so again Correct. there will be opportunities for people to work with them get them ready to start using this correct correct great conversation so far i think um, i have my one last question what opportunities i mean you did mention that it it will uh, you know the plan is of course to be uh, yeah. you know growing this in phases what opportunities does digital rupee present for foreign investors and yeah. businesses integrated to operate in india so i would say that the opportunities for all investors whether foreign or indian yeah obviously as the, these new ecosystem new players come in as they kind of come up with some newer ideas obviously yeah. the investors would be looking at that as an opportunity to invest right uh, i personally believe that this is just the start if you look at the areas today you are talking about person to person transaction in domestic retail yeah right you're talking about person to business transaction in the again retail right. wholesale you just talked about currently government securities settlement Right. Now, if you again, these are all domestic. Now, the moment you layer it with international, yeah, and the moment you lay it with other services that you do, whether it's a lending side, whether it's a insurance side, there are all kind of a ecosystem where the money gets used. Correct, correct. If you kind of take those interactions out and then you start integrating those, you yeah. suddenly realize that the opportunities are much bigger for investors as well as businesses. Right. And wherever the physical money or a regular money today gets used in some form or shape. I think this will play a very huge role. Right. And like I gave you example, UPI. Imagine those two banks today; they have to do a settlement on a batch basis, which needs to a lot of other processes, yeah. right? Of reconciliations, etc. If you have a CBDC wholesale token behind those banks, yeah, which on a real time basis getting, let's say, as we are getting debit and credit in sure. our account there, yeah. so even the settlement is done right there. Correct. And again, the same thing can go into even international trade. Correct. So there are so many examples which are underway, and as I said, it's an evolving process, like other systems and processes as well. Right. So I think it's a very interesting ecosystem for everybody, even in this room. Uh, just one opportunity for all the people in the room. RBI also does a hackathon regularly uh, called Harbinger, mm -hmm. and they again ask for two cohorts. One is for offline transaction. By offline, they mean devices without internet. Mm -hmm. which means a device to device transaction mm -hmm. right how can that be done so again they are looking for pilots and ideas second is they are looking at increasing the tsp obviously that's a big challenge in the blockchain so i'm sure a lot of people in the audience will already be thinking and working yeah. but if they have ideas they should again connect rbi and then present their ideas put it to test and these right. are all entrepreneur investment all kind of opportunities right right yeah. Great, um, great conversation with you, you. Uh, Naveen. Thank you so much for taking out My time pleasure. from your busy schedule and joining us today on the CIA News All Things PFSI and FinTech Summit 2023. It is my honor to have this conversation with you, learn, uh, you know, from your experience and your perspectives for Digital Ruby. Um, thank you so much once again for joining thank us. Thank you, Prasbu, and thanks uh, for inviting me and being part of this interesting event. Thank you very thank much. Thank you so much. Thank you.